Good. Okay, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. And I'd like to thank you for being here today. I'd like to thank Chairman Brescia and my fellow legislators that are standing behind me who supported this 100%. When I came to the legislature in January, I approached Chairman Brescia about forming an opioid subcommittee to raise awareness to this epidemic in Orange County. And that's exactly what we're doing. And we can't do it without your help. And there are a lot of people here today that I hope to recognize without leaving anyone out. Today we have families standing with me here today to my left and my right, parents who have lost a loved one, family members who have lost a loved one to this ugly and growing opioid epidemic. Fellow lawmakers, state and local, are with us here today and I'm going to charge them with their first duty of the year as they take office in Albany. We have our district attorney's office well represented here with Mr. Bob Conflitti, who I can't thank enough for coming to our opioid subcommittee and presenting this piece of legislation that we're about to pass here today. Our sheriff is here, Sheriff Du Bois. We couldn't have a better sheriff uh, in Orange County out there day in and day out fighting the fight and his, his men are truly the, the boots on the ground and all of our law enforcement agencies throughout the county. Our commissioners of health and mental health are here today. Great organizations like ADAC, Catholic Charities, Orin Regional Medical Center, Friends of Recovery, and a lot more are all stakeholders in this epidemic. Our community coalitions, Tri-County is here, Warwick is here, Greenwood Lake is here, Port Jervis, Middletown, Newburgh, Menacing, growing numbers. These are the people that are front and center. My good friend Annette Cars is here today. Annette is the one that I, that, uh, I was connected with as I began my, uh, my campaigning and learned of this epidemic, but also 32 years of teaching. Uh, to date, I've seen 11 of my former students perish to this ugly epidemic. Mr. Bob Began is a parent of one of my former students in here today. <clears throat> I won't ask you to raise your hands how many of you know somebody that's affected by this epidemic because every hand in the room will go up. But having lunch with a friend of mine the other day, she passed something that was very telling and I want to share it with you. We were talking about the opioid epidemic and her her nephew has an affliction, and she said, isn't it kind of odd that people in our world today, in, in, in America, are offended by statues? Poor Gandhi is the latest victim, and the schools will be scurrying now to get Gandhi out of the books, but why aren't they scurrying to do something about this? Or people that are offended by saying, Merry Christmas. Well, I've got my Christmas tie on today. Shouldn't we be offended by the over 500,000 Americans that have perished from opioid and fentanyl related overdoses? Shouldn't we be offended at that? Shouldn't we be offended at 70,000 Americans that will die this year alone? Shouldn't we be offended at 102 and growing, the year's not over yet, Orange County residents who have died at the hands of this wicked scourge? Shouldn't we be offended at cheap and plentiful deadly fentanyl that's flooding into our towns? Shouldn't we be offended by gummy bears and gummy worms laced with this garbage getting into our schools and into the hands of our children? Shouldn't we be offended at a governor who last year said marijuana is a gateway drug but today wants to legalize it for the sake of Tax dollars, $1.3 billion? Drug dealing to me. Shouldn't we be offended at that? I think we all should. At a recent conference in Boston, U.S. Surgeon General Jerome Adams encouraged local control and local innovation for dealing with this epidemic. He further stressed that law enforcement, healthcare groups, community organizations, and others should collaborate together in order to effectively combat this deadly crisis. In Orange County, we're doing just that. With our coalitions, with our health commissioner, mental health commissioner, our district attorney, our sheriff, my fellow legislators standing behind us, we're doing exactly that. Today, we're going to add to those efforts with the help of our district attorney's office, Mr. Bob Conflitti, and we're going to pass a resolution recognizing analogs, who I'm going to allow uh, Mr. Conflitti to speak on, to be added to a list of deadly drugs, to the state list, and criminalize them. We have several elected officials here today. We have Carl Brabenick, 
We have Jonathan Jacobson. We have a representative, Gene Gallagher, from Aileen Gunther's office. We've heard from Mr. Skoufis, Senator-elect, Ms. Metzger, Senator-elect, who are willing to take this fight to Albany where it belongs. But it starts here. It starts locally. It starts with those coalitions. It starts with those legislators. It starts with everyone in the room to raise awareness. Let's be offended at the right things. Not my Christmas tie, please. Let's be offended and let's call for action. The Surgeon General's right. It starts locally. Let's start locally. Mr. Conflitti, can I ask you to come forward and, and explain <coughs> in legal terms? And again, please give Bob a round of applause. Started with a great idea. Thank you, Rob. Appreciate it. Um, the issue here is that law enforcement is continuously falling behind uh, people that are selling drugs to people and killing them. Um, in order for law enforcement to uh, prosecute anyone for possession, sale, manufacture of any substance, the substance has to be listed on a, a set of specific schedules in the public health law. Uh, the problem is that the drug chemists, the illegal drug chemists, are ahead of us. Every time we criminalize something by putting it on the right schedule in the public health law, they change the chemistry a little bit uh, so that it's not a substance that's listed there any longer. Law enforcement's hands are tied at that point. We're not able to, to prosecute anyone for possession, sale, manufacture of those substances unless they're listed there. The biggest problem is happening these days with fentanyl. Uh, fentanyl is a, it, 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 as, as fentanyl, it is a lawful, uh, it's a controlled substance. It's listed on the, the, uh, the, those, one of those schedules, uh, Schedule 2. Uh, you know, if a person has a proper prescription, uh, it can be legally possessed, used, sold, manufactured, whatever the case might be. Uh, the issue is that the, uh, those out there selling drugs that are killing people are changing the chemistry on fentanyl just a little bit, so it's no longer listed. Uh, in the public health law, and they're ahead of us. Every time we add another fentanyl, we, the analog is the, the, the technical term for what that, you know, fentanyl with a little bit of changed chemistry. Every time we add a fentanyl analog to the public health law schedules, they change it a little bit. So we can't, we can't uh, do anything with that drug until the legislature catches up. As um, I'm sure we all know, legislative action is slow. Uh, it's difficult for us to stay ahead of uh, people out there uh, selling, selling, actually selling death in many ways, uh, unless we uh, get ahead of the curve, get ahead of, of the drug dealers out there. Uh, the, the, um, the resolution that the legislature uh, intends to pass today, uh, I brought this idea to Mr. Sassy's attention uh, maybe a month or so ago. Uh, the idea here is that we, we would like to see the state legislature uh, amend the public health law in a way that keeps us ahead uh, of the illegal drug dealers. Um, the recommendation we have uh, in, the, in the resolution uh, is to amend the public health law to, uh, to basically parrot federal law. Under federal law, uh, the, the, uh, the federal attorney general uh, has the authority to change their version uh, of the public health law uh, administratively. And what they've done uh, at the federal level is defined fentanyl-related substance to mean fentanyl plus any of five chemical tweaks on fentanyl. Um, anything that's, that, that's fentanyl or in, you know, modified by one of those, uh, those chemical changes qualifies as a controlled substance under federal law. So all we're asking the legislature to do here, state legislature to do here, is just to, just to conform New York law to federal law so that people who are, who are selling, manufacturing, possessing uh, those illegal, or those what are currently are legal substances, um, so that we, uh, you know, law enforcement can do something uh, about those substances. This, this problem, uh, I mean, it sounds kind of like an esoteric problem, except when you realize that of the 102 people um, that Mr. Sassy mentioned who, uh, who died this year so far in Orange County uh, of opiate overdoses, 18 of them died, at least in part, from one of these fentanyl analogs that was not, a crimin was not illegal for them to, to be sold to them at the time that they, that they took the drug. So uh, it has real world consequences, what we're talking about here today. 
Um, frankly, I think it's a small part of the problem, uh, but it's a part of the problem that we can solve with very simple legislation uh, that we're calling on the, uh, the state legislature to pass. Uh, and legislation, you know, I, the, I, this idea has been floated before by the governor, and uh, so far the, the state legislature hasn't acted. Um, we're calling on them to do that today. Thank you, Bob. How was that? Perfect. <laughs> Uh, Legislator Sassy, I apologize for being a few minutes late. We're getting a verdict in a, in a major case uh, next door as I speak. Uh, I can't commend the legislature enough for taking this action. It's about time uh, that we put a little pressure on Albany. I know we have some uh, representation here from our people from Albany. Uh, this, this needs to be done. Uh, just recently, the District Attorneys Association, I'm the first vice president of that for the state. Uh, we put out on our Facebook page um, a lot of Bob's work. I have to commend Bob for what he has done. Uh, it's good to have a, a good staff. And Bob took this project uh, that we talked about maybe six weeks ago, and he really got it up and running. Um, at least one of those 18 cases could have been prosecuted in this county if it was uh, on the schedule, a schedule two listed, the, the analog was a schedule two drug. That's what's a shame in all of this. And you may think it's only one, but that's one family. That's one person that meant something to someone. And yes, it probably only would have been a drug sale charge, but it would have held somebody accountable. The fight against the opioid epidemic has to be multi-pronged, multifaceted. You have to have education and prevention. You have to have treatment, and you have to have enforcement. And very shortly, you'll be seeing an op-ed coming out from me that talks about we need more money for education and prevention and more money for enforcement. Treatment is needed. It's complicated. It's complex. It's individual. Um, but we have to do all of it equally. And you cannot just forget about education and prevention. 30 years ago, we didn't wear seat belts. 30 years ago, smoking didn't cause cancer. 30 years ago, heart disease, we didn't have cardiovascular activity. All of these things have been beaten or reduced through public awareness campaigns and through education and prevention. This epidemic can be handled the same way. It's the people that haven't gotten addicted, their parents, the kids, that we need to reach now to prevent that from happening. It's much easier to prevent something than to treat something once it happens. That doesn't mean that we don't treat the people that need help. We do that, and it doesn't mean that we stop enforcing. But again, I commend um, Mr. Sassy, I commend the legislature, all of them, for taking this action, and I hope that the people in Albany, our senators and our assembly uh, men and women, uh, take the time to pass this and allow either the attorney general, the governor, the commissioner of health, someone to administratively be able to regulate this so that the one person in this county that should be prosecuted can be prosecuted. Thank you. Just a few. I will hold you up here. You know, uh, Rob said something uh, really interesting. Uh, I don't know, he said it about maybe 20 times that we shouldn't be offended. You know, a year and a half ago, um, I called this a crisis and an epidemic, and some people criticized me for saying that. I was offended because it, it is. You got to call it what it is. And it's gotten worse. There's more deaths this year in Orange County than there was last year. Only a few, but it's still there. Um, personal experience when Rob said, raise, you know, people raised their hand about somebody that was affected. About two and a half years ago, I had a, a parent come to me and said, I'm just waiting for the phone call. I don't know what it is. I can't get through to my son. He got the call this year the day before Father's Day. It's affected all of us. And for uh, all of us to think it's not a crisis or to be offended by calling it a crisis or an epidemic, they ought to get different jobs. But um, thank you for your time. It is a crisis. It is an epidemic. I'm on record for saying it for years. And um, it's about time Albany does something about it and we keep up with the um, with, with, the, with the drug makers and with the chemists and whatever the terminology is, 
you know, you got to give us the tools, but I agree with the district attorney also. We have to have a combination of parenting, education, treatment, and enforcement. Thank you. Good morning. I am offended also. When we have desperate times, uh, we need to find hope within that desperation, and this gives me hope. In the world of addiction, stigma is what has kept people from accessing care. It is what's kept people quiet from talking about the struggles of their loved ones or their struggles themselves. By standing here together, we reduce some of that stigma today, and I thank you all for that. Legislator Stassi for leading this subcommittee. And I have to mention our County Executive Steve Newhouse, who's represented today by Harry Poor here and Justin Rodriguez. But a year ago, we took on, we embarked on a journey to change our ecosystem around substance abuse disorder. And we will be making a report January 18th that talks about all of the changes that have happened across this county. We have increased the number of deaths in every death. One death is too many but we have not doubled from year to year as some other communities have seen because we have committed stakeholders, as you see here in this room, who have been working together to make a difference, who have been increasing the prevention, increasing the Narcan on the street, promoting medication-assisted treatment, which is the best practice intervention for those who are struggling, and really working towards treatment on demand. In January, we will open a comprehensive call center that will be co-located at the Emergency Operations Center that will be a number that anyone in this county can call to get an evaluation, to get connected, to get a warm handoff, to have a peer come and meet them where they're at and support them in beginning their recovery process. That is made possible by all of the stakeholders across this county working towards alleviating some of the desperate uh, times that we've experienced under this opioid epidemic. And that call center can be reached by calling 1-800-832-1200. It's operated by the Mental Health Association, and they will be a single point of access to connect people to service and care. We, all of us, have been out in this community talking to the residents of our community, and so many say, I didn't know where to go to get help. We don't want to hear that. We know where to go to get help. We want to be sure our community knows. So I thank you all for the work that you'll do. And hopefully you can be with us on January 18th at the Emergency Operations Center to hear the update of all the work that our stakeholders have been doing. Thank you. First, I want to thank uh, the District Attorney's Office, the Department of Health, and the Legislature uh, for bringing this to the attention of the public. Uh, I will sponsor this legislation in Albany when I'm up there uh, in the majority. I've spoken to uh, Assemblywoman Aileen Gunther, who said she would join on this fight, as well as uh, Senator, Senators-elect uh, Skoufis and Metzger. I want to say, firmly, this is not a Democratic or Republican issue. This is not an upstate or downstate issue. This is not a city, suburban, or rural issue. This is all of us. It is a human issue. That's what we have. It's a health issue. So this, I think, will get great support up in Albany and will pass. Um, and I think it will cross all party lines and all regions of the state. I appreciate the comments, how this is part of the mix that has to be done to fight this epidemic. It can't only be an enforcement. It has to be education. It has to be treatment. But it doesn't mean that you don't have enforcement and that you don't fill the loopholes that you have in this situation. So I thank you for inviting me here. I will sponsor this legislation in uh, January. And uh, good luck and keep up the good work. And one more thing. I want to thank the families that are here because they've been on the front line. I've had clients that have uh, died from overdose. I've, um, so it's so important because we have to remember, this isn't just not a, it's not a legal issue, it's a human issue and, and you've been affected. So we don't, we remember that. Thank you.
Um, as we've heard, the acronym is TREE. It's Treatment, Recovery, Education, and Enforcement. Uh, in the past four years that I've been in Albany, I've seen us take steps for treatment and recovery. We've been very proactive with that. But now it is time that we focus also on education and enforcement, as our law enforcement officials have said today at our district attorney's office. We are able to do this. We can do this together. We have a great Hudson Valley delegation um, from the east to the west, and uh, we will be happy to sponsor this. I will co-sponsor this legislation with Assemblyman Jacobson, and we will push this forward with the Speaker and the Senate and try to get it through to the Governor and get this uh, in the books and as reality. So um, I want to thank, again, all the families that are here today. I also want to thank the legislature for bringing this to our attention, and we will be uh, making this a priority in the new year. So thank you very much. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that, that concludes our press conference today. Again, I want to thank everyone for being here. Remember this, this disease uh, knows no race, it knows no religion, it knows no socioeconomic status, it knows nothing except death. So let's work together. I look forward to 2019 expanding my opioid uh, subcommittee to raise awareness to the epidemic here in Orange County. You've heard from our elected officials here today, our state elected officials. We need your help in putting pressure on those elected officials in Albany to act on this and on similar measures to combat this epidemic. Thank you very much, and thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.